Okay. Thank you everybody very much for joining us this evening for the library's presentation from Nancy Wind on self-care, a toolkit for the new year. Nancy is a health and lifestyle coach and she is the founder of Peaks and Poses, Trail Yoga and Outdoor Adventures. Um, she has a website, which I will put in the chat in just a moment, um, where you can learn a little bit more about her work. And she's got a lot of links there for um, uh, lots of different uh, topics beyond just the, the trail yoga and outdoor adventures as well. So lots of things to discover there, which I'm sure she will go over more. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Nancy. Great. Thank you so much, um, Allison. And thank you to the Belmont Public Library for reaching out to me to um, start our new year off with such an incredibly important topic, um, self-care. And I am um, really kind of humbled by all of you being here. Uh, everybody's got their video off, which I have to say I'm not used to. So if you want to show your face, please do. And um, obviously, this is a very important topic for, uh, for really for everybody. And oh, thank you. I see some really beautiful faces there. <laughs> and um, you know, if anything, what we've learned over the last couple of years is that our care for ourselves um, is that much more important to um, to really build strong immune system and to be able to, um, you know, build resiliency, not even just to, you know, a virus, but to so much else that's going on around us in in our world. So, Thank you again to the Belmont Library and thank all of you for, um, for being here. And what I think I want you to do now is just to start off by putting your arms out in front of you and then cross one over the other and reach behind yourself and just give yourself a nice big hug for being here because that is truly important that you are really the only person that can take care of yourself. I know we like to feel like other people are taking care of us, and I'm sure that people in your life do, but ultimately it's really about um, putting yourself pretty high up on, um, on the scale to take care of yourself in so many different ways. So um, just a little bit about um, my background as um, I'm a yoga instructor, 200, um, our level, and I'm also a continuous learner of Ayurveda. And if you've never heard that word before, that's okay. Um, Ayurveda is, um, when it's defined, it's the wisdom of life, and it's the holistic, um, really health system that's been practiced in India for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So this is an ancient healing system that looks to bring um, really balance into our mind and our body um, and our spirit through um, diet and lifestyle. Digestion is really the key to health through the lens of Ayurveda. And a lot of what I'm going to share with you today um, really kind of overlaps with sort of, you know, Western um, approaches to taking care of ourselves. And it's sort of is an integration, you know, with Ayurveda and a lot of other Eastern practices. Um, so, but there's so much of what I'm going to share to you is really just um, knowledge that even science is coming out with, you know, as we speak. So, even though I'm a continuous learner of Ayurveda, it doesn't mean that you have to go and also, I, I would encourage you to read a little bit about it, but it's not really, um, I'm not an Ayurveda practitioner, but to me, when I think about Ayurveda, it's almost like an inquiry into oneself. And it's about um, aligning with the circadian rhythms of the day. 
So that is, if you're not really sure of what that means, it's about, is, is about the sunrise and the sunset, right? That's marking our day, it's marking our time. It's being, it's noticing the, um, the seasonal changes and how we um, live in reciprocity with that um, interchange of the seasons. And we, if you're living here in New England, um, we're fortunate. Um, I know a lot of people don't like winter. However, we are very fortunate that we do have four distinct seasons and there's a way that we can align with the changes and to take notice of, of what's happening sort of mentally and physically and how we can bring balance into our life through the circadian rhythms of the day in addition to the seasonal changes, in addition to the changes that we go through from the time that we're born until our last days that we're taking a breath. So um, there's a fantastic book called The Idiot's Guide to Ayurveda or Ayurveda for Dummies which I would put on your list. It's a very interesting uh, philosophy. So I'm gonna pull a little bit from there um, because to me, it makes sense. Um, it makes sense about trying to bring balance into, one, into one's life, to sort of live with the changing energies throughout the day and to, to live in sync and to live um, in a rhythm. And that's where I've really pulled a lot of information from, from, um, from the Ayurveda philosophy. So um, again, I want you to, uh, I want you to uh, thank you for being here. I also wanna mention that if you do have some questions, Allison and I talked about, you can put them in the chat. I see there's some, um, some things going on in the chat right now. I can't really, I can't multitask. So I'm not gonna be able to look at the chat, but Allison is going to look through that. If you've got any, any questions, feel free to write something, but we're gonna probably save some time at the end um, to do like a Q and A. All right, so I hope that works for all of you. And what I'm gonna really do is just start um, morning time. As Allison mentioned, I um, am the founder of Peaks and Poses Trail Yoga and Outdoor Adventure. Um, I have a huge passion for spending time outside and this was just taken um, one evening on one of my retreats in Cold Creek Canyon, Colorado. So the morning, I'm just gonna give you just some ideas. Um, take notes, don't overwhelm yourself. Come away from this talk with, you know, maybe one or two things that really just kind of ring home to you. That's something that you could easily implement. I don't want you to um, feel like you have to try everything, but what makes sense to you? Maybe pick something. I'm going to go through the cycles of the day. So we're going to do morning, afternoon, and evening. Maybe pick one thing from each time of the day right? And take a few notes. But I think the most important thing, the most important activity that you can do to start your day is to hydrate. And I'm just going to give you a little tip about what I do. I've got a little thermos here. It's already filled with water. I boil my water in the evening and I put it in a thermos. So when I wake up, I'm able to drink. I've got 16 ounces right now of warm water. And it's nice, um, the warmth is good for our body. Cold is very shocking to our system. And if you think about it, we're warm blooded mammals, right? Everything inside us is warm. And so the warm water is just very, it's very nurturing to your system. It obviously drinking water first thing in the morning is gonna hydrate you and most of us are dehydrated. We just go through the day, we go through the life, trying to get all that water in, right? I see some of you, you know, are drinking water as, we, um, as we're here tonight because we, we do know that we need to stay hydrated. We see that as we age, that our skin, our hair, our nails can become very dry. So first thing in the morning, hydrate. It gets your digestive system going, right? So it sort of activates like, peristalsis, and it's also really important 
to help with elimination. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that, but particularly through an Ayurveda lens, elimination, and I'm talking about a bowel movement, is the most important activity of the day. So think about that for yourself. So you can start off the morning hydrating. You can put some lemon in there or some lime if that really interests you. Um, try, if you're a coffee drinker, try to have some water before your coffee. All right. Um, any kind of movement in the morning. Again, movement is going to get your blood circulating. It's going to get your feet on the ground so that you can start off the day grounded. It's going to um, oxygenate um, your brain cells. Um, it's really just going to help circulate all the fluids in your body and also get you from a lying down state of sleep to just sort of starting to move through your day, really just starting to awaken. And um, through an Ayurveda lens, the morning is a very special time. It is actually an awakening time and it has a very, has a special name. And I'm not going to get into that here, but um, it doesn't have to be anything super fast. It could, it could be jumping jacks. It could be just some stretching in your bed. It could be doing some yoga. It could be turning on some music and dancing. But the whole idea is just to try to shift yourself physically and mentally from a, um, a sleep state to a wake state. Now, if you're not quite ready to sort of jump out of bed and believe me, there are many mornings where I'm not, the, I'm, I'm not that way, particularly in the winter, where I tend to just sort of stay in bed a little bit longer because um, I don't know, winter really is the time sort of like a hibernation. So it could be at night, it could be in the morning. Um, I will um, sit in my bed and I will do some meditation. Now, I know a lot of times meditation is just sort of like, ah, it's like that big M word, right? Like marriage, meditation. It's like, how do I do that? I can't seem to, you know, calm my brain down or, or sit down long enough, you know, to be calm. And that is all really normal. That is very common. Um, our brain was meant to think, right? So we can't just stop the thinking, but we can slow it down a little bit. We can have longer pauses in between our thoughts. We can just take 10 deep breaths and focus in on your breath. Because when we, when we focus in on the breath, right, those thoughts just kind of get put aside just a little bit, right? So if you want to wake up in the morning and just sit for a minute, you can use your phone timer. You can just take 10 breaths. Um, I use an app. I absolutely love it. It's called Insight Timer. If anybody else uses it and why I see some head shaking, yeah. You know, um, it's a fantastic app. It, there is a free version. And um, there it's, think of it as like a catalog of um, meditations, sound bowls, courses, um, different talks. There's, there's events that you can participate in from yoga and meditation and chanting. It's just a wealth of, um, of mindfulness. So I've gotten, oh boy, I would say maybe six or seven years ago, I never thought that I could sit for a minute. I have such a monkey brain for those who are here that know me. Um, and I just sat in my living room one day with my timer on for a minute and said, okay, I can do this. So I've I, obviously over the years, I've gradually been able to increase that time. But what's more important is that I've been able to consistently set up some time every morning to sit for a few minutes. Um, as opposed to sitting for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I, I'm, you know, just being totally honest with you, that's not something that I do. And a lot of the studies um, that, are, that look at meditation, that it's, it's shown that just the consistency of sitting in some quiet or focusing on the breath, even for just a few minutes a day, is far greater than... Um, you know, going on a silent retreat for three days or sitting for 20 minutes or an hour. 
if you have that in you and you have that luxury of time, that's awesome. But I'm just encouraging a few, a few minutes. And if it's hard for you just to sit on your own, then look into something like Insight Timer and maybe you want to be guided by somebody. I do a lot of breath work. I do a lot of gratitude and manifestation practice, but there's like a wealth of all different kinds of meditations that you can access um, from anxiety to, um, you know, lifting your mood to helping you fall asleep. Um, so that's just a few, just a few ideas, but um, I, I really can't say enough about that app. And what I love about it also is Although it is free, if you want to make any donation to any of the teachers or instructors that you're working with, you're able to do that. And it's, it's also like on a sliding scale. So it's real, it's fantastic. Um, something else you could do in the morning. Well, let me take those two back. The meditation and what I'm going to talk about now is gratitude practice. Those are fantastic practices even at night. If you want, I like to start my morning with gratitude. I've got a journal. It's by my bed. And I would say um, when I'm in a good routine, I'll, you know, six or seven days a week, I will, um, I will write in my gratitude journal. Um, I can get out of sync, right? Everybody does. Nobody's perfect. But, um, uh, you know, I will just realize like I haven't written in my, in my journal for a while and I'll just go out and get it and I'll get back into a little bit of a groove. Um, I've taken a lot of courses on gratitude. So I've, I've gone from writing what you're grateful for, for five minutes straight to just write one thing a day. I've taken courses on showing gratitude for others and also showing gratitude for yourself. And, and that is also really key. It's so, it's so easy to show gratitude for somebody else, but think about, you know, showing gratitude for your, for yourself. So maybe there's two things that you write down. Um, I love just looking back on my gratitude journal and just kind of seeing like things that were that, you know, that I was grateful for a year ago, two years ago, three days ago. Um, and it could be the same thing, right? It could be the same thing every day because there's no right or wrong with a grat, you know, in showing what you're, what you're grateful for. It's really just a very personal, subjective um, journal that you keep. Um, eating breakfast. I can't stress enough um, just the importance of being able to uh, really nourish yourself to start your day. And um, the drinking water, the moving around, all of that is helpful in trying to um, really activate your digestive system. And in Ayurveda, it's called your Agni, it's your fire. And that's what, um, you know, it's, it transforms food into energy. So breakfast is really super important. Um, we have to start our day nourishing ourselves. Um, another wonderful idea um, for movement or just connecting to nature is to be able to go outside and take a, take a walk. Again, it doesn't have to be a marathon. It doesn't even have to be 15 minutes, but maybe you live in an area where you could just like walk around the block, or maybe you can just go, you know, walk around your house. Um, it's just a wonderful feeling, no matter what season it is, to open up your door, to step outside, to take a big breath of fresh air, to look up at the sky, and just to notice, right? And to really make that kind of connection. Like we're, you know, all type times during the day, we are, um, we can be very disconnected to what's going on around us. Um, you know, unfortunately, most of us, if not all of us have this smartphone, right, that has become an extension of ourself. And, um, you know, I put myself in the same category that it's so easy at times just to pick up the, your, my phone, your phone, and just to open it up and see what's going on. And, you know, what if we put our phones down for a few minutes and we walked outside and we got our feet on the ground, right? And we just looked around and saw the birds, the trees. We noticed the changes of the season. It's simple, but not always easy to do. 
And, um, you know, we've evolved as humans, our technology as has evolved. And um, it's, you know, the phones, the apps, everything was really um, designed to keep the phones in our hand and to scroll. Um, I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's out on Netflix. And it was all about, you know, the people that started, um, you know, Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram and um, all of those social media, Snapchat and, um, you know, not sure. It sounds like they didn't have those kinds of intentions. They didn't know like how addicted that we all would be. But this is really, um, you know, 2023 could be your year to make some separation from you and your phone. And speaking of phones, if you notice that just in my six bullets here, none of them were to pick up your phone and see what's going on. But, um, you know, I'll, I will speak for myself. It's been a long time since picking up my phone was sort of the first thing that I did in the morning. Um, and if it's something that you do, that's, there's no judgment here. It's just sort of time to, you know, just rethink, like, what could I do before I pick up my phone? Because what happens with the phone is, um, you know, a lot of us like will turn on the news. So think about the scenario of you open up your phone and all of a sudden, you know, you just see this like horrific news because most news is, is that. Um, and how that sets your day, right? There's a quote, um, however you begin your day, however you start your day is how your day is going to go. And there is really a lot of truth to that. Um, so try to think of something else you could do, at least one thing before you pick up your phone. I've had, I've worked, I've done some coaching with people who they've gotten like a very special phone pillow and they've put their phone on the pillow in another room. Um, people will just, you know, take their phones and put it in another room. So they're not even anywhere near their phones so that they can make those choices of um, some healthier um, things, habits that they can do in the morning. But um, the, the phone just feeds our mind. And uh, we live in a very busy world. Our minds are constantly going and it's hard. It's hard to resist, right? So anything that you can do to make some kind of separation um, or timers, um, I've got timers on my phone, on different apps, things like that. People put, uh, set their own timers. Uh, people have got apps that disappear Right, because it's so we can control it all. It's so hard. We're up against sort of you know these addictions. Um, so just think about morning time, doing something a little bit more for your um, some healthier choices before you turn on the phone. And I, I was going on to the the phone brings lots of kind of you know almost kinetic, frenetic, chaotic energy into the mind. And you really want to start your day with a clear, focused mind with your feet on the ground. And a lot of these practices will help you make um, some of those changes. So, all right, we're going to move on to, and if people have um, any questions about the morning? I see um, lots of things going on in the chat. Please feel free and I will be happy to uh, save some time afterwards and go back. So we've got the midday, the afternoon. Um, so through, um, through an Ayurveda lens, and if you think of the, the the Ayurveda principles in the lens really sort of follow the, um, the rise and fall of the sun. So if you think about it, the sun is at its highest peak around noontime. It's the strongest, right? Um, it's got the most heat any time of the year, particularly in the summer. And so in terms of like digestion, it has the most power to digest your food. 
And this is very, very different than, um, than the Western uh, diet and the Western just lifestyle. I know I grew up and I really up until about 10 years ago, I always had my main meal was supper, was dinner. When I grew up, my, my, my mom made a huge meal with, you know, fruit and salad and some kind of protein and vegetables. And then we had dessert. Um, and it's wonderful. However, what a lot of studies are showing now is that a large meal at the end of the day impacts our sleep. So that it's best to have about three hours after your last meal to, for your body to be able to digest that food. So then it can prepare for sleep. I'll probably talk a little bit about this when we get to the nighttime, but your body has a really important job to do when you're sleeping. It's got to, you know, sort of, detox from the day and re-energize yourself. And it's got to really kind of nourish a lot of the organs. So it doesn't really want to be digesting food because when it digests your food, it's like, I can't do those other really important tasks that I'm supposed to be doing right now. So having a bigger meal during your lunchtime is something that will potentially impact your sleep because you can have a lighter dinner, right? You do most of your thinking, most of your creativity, most of your like work way, you know, at least till most of us, maybe work, we work till five, six, Beyond that, we have to talk. Um, you know, I know with lots of people going remote now, people are working longer hours. Um, so that's something for, you know, for yourself to figure out. But by the time four o'clock rolls around, our digestive system, our digestive power is not at its peak. And that's because our digestive system sort of reflects the rise and fall of the sun. So four o'clock, especially now in winter time, it's kind of just chugging along. And so um, you, if you have your larger meal during lunch, you'll, you'll see what happens over time is that you'll be, you won't, you'll still be hungry for dinner, but you'll, you'll, you'll need less to get you through the rest of your day so that you can have that space between um, your last meal and when you're going to be able to fall asleep. So lots of um, you know, sleep experts um, are all kind of saying the same thing right now, minimum of three hours. So take a look at dinner time, take a look at, um, you know, what time you are going to sleep. And um, that's a whole other conversation that I have about, you know, sort of the recommended time for us to sleep. But I'm gonna move on here for, um, for seasonal eating. Again, um, through the Ayurveda lens, seasonal eating has been a part of their diet for, you know, always. But seasonal eating right now is really being looked at here um, in, in, in Western, um, lifestyle they're, um, they're doing a lot of studies just on, um, eating seasonally. So really what's grown during that time period and how it's having a, um, impact on our, um, our microbiome and our, um, immune system. So, um, it's tricky because when you go to the supermarket, we have everything, right? Because we have the ability to import and export. So if you're sort of a little wondering like what's in season, I always like to go 
and look at, you know, in, when you go into the supermarket, sort of like what's kind of in the middle or what's like, what, it, what's, what are they showing when you first walk in the door, right? Um, those are usually things that are in season. And, and now a lot of our markets are, um, you know, have a nice relationship with some of our local farms. So you'll see, you know, little signs from, you know, where this produce came from. Um, you know that if it's shipped in from Chile or California, it's probably not seasonal. Um, so, so that does take a little bit of getting used to. Um, I always think of the winter as, um, you know, winter isn't a growing season, right? So hundreds of years ago, um, when the farmers, they farmed the land and then there was that big harvest in the fall. And then all those wonderful like root vegetables went into like the root cellar, right? Cause those were the, um, those were, that was the produce that could stay fresh through the winter. So right now with all of the, you can see them in the stores, like all of the different kinds of squashes and sweet potatoes. I mean, the stores now have like three or four different kinds of, um, you know, yams or sweet potatoes that you can get. Lots of onion, garlic, um, anything that's grown in the ground, carrots, beets, um, you know, things of that nature, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, those are a lot more seasonal. Um, and it's interesting when you eat seasonally because um, there's things that will just, that's been a big, huge part of my self-care is making that kind of switch. And so there are things that I just eat in the summer that I don't really eat in the fall, the winter or the spring, but boy, when those berries come out again, I like, I really look forward to either going berry picking or just getting them to the supermarket. You also know that they're gonna taste better. Right. I mean, if anybody's tasted a strawberry in mid to late June here in New England and compare that to a strawberry that they're going to eat in January, you know, they're going to taste better. So um, they're just richer in nutrients at the time. They're um, they're fresher because there's less transportation getting them from, you know, across the coast. Um, so. It's, it's a big part of self-care is looking at what you eat, when you eat, and also how you eat, which brings me to the mindful eating, which I have to say is probably one of the hardest practices that I've ever implemented. And I'd say it's probably about a year now where I, um, I, I live alone, so it's easy, or it has been really easy, and even people who don't live alone have shared with me, to eat and be on my computer at the same time. I don't know what I'm doing, working or looking up something on a website, or scrolling through my phone, <clears throat> or reading. And if you think about it, I know there have been so many meals that I've eaten and all of a sudden I'm like, wait, what just happened? How, did, how is there no more food in my, you know, in my bowl or on my plate? Like I don't even, I didn't even remember eating it. And so what I have done more recently is I started off with just one meal where I just sat at a table in my home I didn't have my computer. I didn't have my phone. I put it in another room and I just ate my meal. And is a really interesting inquiry into that. And there was times where I felt lonely. There were times when I wanted to rush through my meal because the quicker I ate, then the quicker I could go and do something, right? And, um, and the first time I did it, I actually timed myself. I was just kind of curious, like, how long does it take me to eat this meal? I was horrified. So it, it doesn't sound like it's probably not your typical, oh, self-care tip, right? Like mindful eating. But what I have found over time, so now it's, I've been practicing probably a little bit over a year 
I'm at three meals right now. And I would say maybe once, maybe twice through the week, I might be doing something else while I'm eating. But I've really been like sticking to this one because I'm really enjoying the taste of my food. And I, I love to cook. So I cook all my meals. So, you know, when you're going to go through that process of cooking, shopping, cooking, figuring out what you want to make, and then all of a sudden it's just gone and like a woof. Um, I've been chewing more slowly. So my digestive system has been actually really responding to that well. Um, I'm tasting my food and I really enjoying like this, just like this, like it's this whole slowdown of, of my life. And, um, you know, I'm just saying to myself, there's no rush. Everything else can wait. This is really important. And so um, I've been chewing more. I've noticed, oh boy, I'm really exposing a lot, that I was a shoveler and that I would just have something on my spoon or on my fork and I would just, you know, put it in my mouth and I would chew a little bit and then I would swallow. And then I would just like, I wouldn't even put my fork, my utensil down. I just kept like shoveling it into my mouth. And like, that's not really good for your digestive system. It's just not like it just creates, you know, bloating and gas, all this kind of stuff. So I'm just learning to like slow down and really chew everything um, until it's, it's almost just like little bits and I'm eating less. So I'm just really making that sort of like that mind body connection and noticing when I'm full. And so really the self-care there is, is not to overeat, right? Or just kind of, um, it was a whole other topic, but about like why we eat, right? So we got a whole other topic, but the mindful eating, try it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you guys to time yourself tomorrow and I would love it if you would send me an email. You can reach me on my website, peaksandposes.com. Um, and just to tell me like, how long was your meal? And then just see, you know, maybe just like extend that a little bit. Really enjoy your food, especially if you're somebody that cooks. Enjoy what you've made. You've put so much intention and so much love into that food. All right, so whole body movement breaks. We're going to shift here. After you eat, nothing better than just getting up and taking a little bit of a walk. While you're sitting at your desk all throughout your day, we've got, we've got to move, right? Motion is lotion. And so, um, you know, a lot of us do sit for a good part of the day, maybe in front of the computer or whatever, or you're driving. Just make sure that you can get up and you've got some movement breaks for yourself. I mean, I was, um, a speech language therapist for 35 years. I retired in June, 2021. I worked at a school system and, um, you know, kids need movement breaks and adult, we need movement breaks. We are not meant to sit all day. We were meant to be farmers. We were out, we were meant to just be out and, you know, tilling the land and moving from place to place. So, so just, you know, again, Set a timer. Know that after a meal, you're going to get up and move. Um, I just, it, just an, another um, offshoot of just movements or just the eye movement breaks. All right. In fact, let's do them right now. Just do one little one. So just sit comfortably, right? And just take your eyes and shift them both over to the right. Try to really get into the corners of your eyes. Feel that stretch. And then slowly bring them back to center and take them over to the left. Trying to get both eyes in those little corners. Come back to center, look up. Nice big stretch there. Not really stretches that we often do. Sort of feel it, right, in your eyeballs. Then slowly come back to center. And then take your gaze down. Try to see the tip of your nose. 
and then come bring it back up to center. So just a little stretch like that can make a little bit of an impact, especially if you're somebody who is on your computer all day long. Um, another really beautiful tip for the day is to, just to drink warm water throughout your day. Again, um, our, we're warm blooded, our insides are warm. Warm liquids are very, very nurturing. Um, cold is very shocking to the system. So I know that's a lot of people love cold water, especially like after a workout. Room temperature um, is just as good as, um, as warm water. So maybe even just some room temperature. This is where I live, Lake Maspinock in Hopkinton, Mass. I've been here now for three and a half years. Sunset. So let's go a little bit into nighttime, ideas for the evening. Oh, this is one of my favorite times of the day. And that's a big, huge change for me. I'm, I used to be such a night owl. I used to be up till, I don't know, 12, one, all sorts of hours. I couldn't even tell you what I was doing at that time of day. It's so long ago, fortunately for me. Um, but, um, you know, and I used to think, oh, I could get by with like five and a half, six hours of sleep. Oh no, now I just can't wait sometimes to get into my bed, especially in the winter. I like just turn into a bear and I just want to hibernate. Um, I talked a little bit about the earlier dinner, uh, the lighter dinner and also the earlier dinner. And the winter is such an amazing time for that because you could just make, oh my God, you could, you could make soup for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. One pot, eat it all day. I used to be somebody that wanted to make a different meal, um, a different dish for every meal. And actually that is a big part right now of my self-care. It's my mental self-care because when I had to think about what I wanted to make every night for dinner or something different for lunch, my brain was like on overload. It was so intense and just really hard to just come up with all these different, like, you know, wonderful things to make. Now I'm like, simple is the better. And if I have soup for dinner, I'm going to have soup for breakfast the next day. I have no problem having soup for breakfast. It's warm. It's cozy, especially, you know, in the fall and the winter time. Not so much for, um, you know, for summer, but um, salad is a wonderful meal that you could have. It's nice and light, right, for a summer dinner, and then you don't have to cook. Um, you get all your produce from your, you know, maybe your CSA or from the farmer's market, and, you know, you're sort of like really good to go. Um, this is a big one. The two of them kind of go together is finding out how you can disconnect from technology. A lot of um, studies are showing now minimum one hour before you're going to go to bed. Um, it'd be great if you can do it before that, but I know. Um, I'm about one hour. I usually lie down around 9.30, find somewhere between 9, 9.30. Lately, it's been 8.30 and I'll just read. Um, so I've got a timer. I've got like a do not disturb on my phone from, um, from nine o'clock until 5 a.m. So um, it's... I, I know it's really, really hard for people. We have to figure out what we could, you know, sort of supplement that with. Um, but again, the, the techno, it's not just the technology. Well, some of it's the technology and the, um, and the screen, right? The light that basically just stimulates our brain. So I know, I know a lot of people are now wearing like the special um, glasses if you're on the computer all day. But, um, but it's also, it's the scrolling, it's the movement of information coming through us, past us, and then actually, you know, our brains absorbing it all. It's, it's really like, it's just, it's too much for the brain. Our brain hasn't really changed that much over time, um, but technology has, and we're just asking it to do too much. Um, so creating a nighttime wind down routine, this is crucial for self-care at night, no matter what that looks like for you. Um, I already went in before 
um, I, I got ready to meet Allison and I already went into my room and I put down my blinds. Um, I only turn on a very soft light in my room. Um, I, my, I'm between 8.30 or 9, I'm um, off of my phone. It's, it's, I will do it, but it's rare. It's, ve it's between 8.30 9. and 9.00 afterwards. It's like very, very rare for me. Um, it's just, it's quiet time. If you think about it, the day is done, right? So if we can reflect what's going on around us, right? The world around us, it's dark out right now. Um, you know, think about um, if any of you have gone camping, right? You, you know, you have dinner, you sit around the campfire a little bit, and then what happens one by one? Somebody starts to yawn, somebody's tired, they're going to go into their tent. There's quiet hours in the campground. And it's usually, you know, it could be eight, nine, 10 o'clock. Rarely, unless you're really up partying, you're up at midnight when you're camping. It's dark. Our bodies respond to what's going on around us. But, you know, because we have electricity, right? That sort of like gave us permission to stay up late. If you go if you run an experiment, you come home at six o'clock, turn off all the lights in your house one night. See what happens. See what time you go to bed. I bet it's going to be earlier. You're just going to be tired. And that's a big thing about the wind down routine is noticing the signs that you're tired, right? A lot of people yawn. A lot of people rub their eyes. A lot of people have told me, I can't think anymore. You're done. You're tired. But there's so much around us that just sort of pushes us and keeps us up at night. So Think about a wind down routine. I'm just listing some things here. Golden milk, it's made with turmeric and either milk or plant-based milk, maybe a cup of herbal tea, sitting and journaling, listening to some quiet music, meditating, breathing. Uh, the walk is more for like after dinner, just get that little bit of fresh air. Connect with family and friends. You know, somebody who's gonna bring a peaceful evening to, you know, your relationship. If you want to call them on the phone, um, reading and, um, um, you know, just think about, you know, maybe jot a few things down, like ways that you know that you can relax. Um, I'm going to give one last um, um, tip and then I'm just sort of noticing the time, which is good. And I'm just about done. Um, one of the things that I just love to do, and I love, I, I learned it through just my studies in Ayurveda, is to give yourself a little bit of a foot massage at night with some really nice organic oil. So whether you, you know, just find, um, there's, I would say like a, um, a sunflower oil, an organic sunflower oil is, is something nice that everybody could use. Just put a little bit on your hands and then just rub, you sit on the sit on the side of your bed and just like rub your feet, right? And this is not really a time for like a partner massage, which is also really nice, but this is about, you know, sort of spending time with yourself and ending your day with yourself. And there's really, the human touch has so much loving energy coming, right, from within, so that when you're sitting down, you've had it, whether it was a great day, a beautiful day, a hard day, a long day, a short day, you're just sitting, relaxing, and spending time massaging your feet, right? They, they do a lot of work for us, and they, our feet don't get the recognition that, um, that they need. So it's really just a beautiful wind-down kind of activity, and the oil um, I recommend maybe putting some socks on, um, and, um, and then just, it's just, it's so relaxing and, um, you know, the bottoms of your feet have, um, just different points that, um, they're sort of like the end of these energy lines that go through your system, um, that comes from Western medicine, from acupuncture. Um, and um, so you're really just kind of giving your, your inner system 
just some loving messages to, to end your day. Um, yeah. So I want to, before we go into um, a Q&A, just thank you all again for coming. We've had such an amazing group of people here. Um, I'm flattered and I'm, I'm excited that you took this time to, um, to join us tonight because it's, uh, you already have sent me a message that this is something that's really important for you. Uh, my website is peaksandposes.com. You can find me on Facebook with Peaks and Poses or Nancy Wind. Um, I'm on Instagram. And um, I also, my Peaks and Poses has an Instagram. I also have a YouTube channel where it's mostly um, short yoga practices. Um, I also am a big, huge plant-based um, cook. So I have a few different um, videos on there of me cooking. Uh, but most of it is um, is um, short yoga practices. So, um, Allison, um, would you like to read some of those questions? Yes, thank you very much, Nancy. That was great. Lots of good, uh, lots of good ideas, and I appreciated too that you suggested you know starting with one for each part of the day and and going from there because. Um, there are so many good things that it might be, you know, nice to start off small and build. Exactly. So yeah, what's going see. on in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of uh, nice comments and interest. Uh, let's see, I think the first one, this was in the morning asking um, about the hydration aspect. How about tea with no sugar and mostly herbal? Would you suggest that um, as opposed to just the warm water? Yeah, I think tea would be okay. Tea can be a little bit drying. Um, so if you're somebody that tends to just sort of run dry internally or in your hair, your nails, your skin, um, but, um, but I think that would be fine. It would definitely be an herbal tea would be better choice than, um, than coffee. Um, yeah. We also have somebody suggesting the Calm app um, as a, an alternative to Insight Timer. It does yes. require a subscription, but that's another option. Yeah. Um, um, Wilson, just to go back to the tea, what I like about the tea is that you're gonna sip it. You know, you're gonna, that person, you're gonna sip the tea slowly. And, uh, and that's kind of what you really want. You want sort of a slow start to your, to your day. Um, let's see, next question was from someone who likes to fast until noon. Would you consider that a bad idea? I know that, um, you know, intermittent fasting and meal spacing is um, a big part of um, different people's lifestyles right now. So, um, you know, and I'm not like a nutritionist, but um, I do some of my own, but I do it more like from 6.30 or seven o'clock at night until the morning where sometimes I might not eat until like nine or 10. Um, noon, noon's late. So I'd be curious to know what that person's window of eating would be. Cause if it's just, if you're eating an earlier dinner at like six and that's only six hours of, of nourishment. So that seems a little, seems a little short um and also wondering like does that you know if that person gets hungry earlier um because you kind of want your digestive system to kind of churn and get working before noon again it's sort of like a it's like an unwind to your morning so you give it some nourishment it doesn't have to be a big huge breakfast but I don't want to say it's right or wrong. I just I would just dive a little bit deeper into some questions about, you know, what they're eating at noon and what their window of nourishment is, you know, to what time. Makes sense. Um, let's see. Someone mentioned that when they eat three hours before bedtime, they get so hungry by bedtime that they have trouble sleeping. Do you have any suggestions for that? Yeah, again, I wonder, I wonder what that person's eating for lunch or what they're eating for breakfast. Like, it's almost like you have to look at like what you're eating earlier in the day also, 
because that also gives you nourishment throughout the day. Um, so if you're not eating a whole lot and then you're eating a big meal um, for dinner, um, you know, there, there could be some ways to readjust that. And um, yeah, and then again, what they're eating for dinner. And, and different, different people require different nourishment depending upon your body type. And this again is sort of more through an Ayurveda lens and, and sort of the makeup of, of your body, but you know, the physical body and even the emotional body. So I would say maybe um, some tea before or some of that golden milk. The golden milk can be a little filling. So it'd be better to probably have something light, like really light, than going to bed hungry, because that's never a good feeling. Um, and I believe you uh, answered this while you were speaking later, but um, as far as warm water, you said that room temperature worked as well too, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just that um, getting away from cold water mm -hmm. is, like I said, I use that word shocking because it, it really is. It just shocks the body. Again, this is just through my lens, but... Um, but, but room temperature, I, I drink room temperature. Uh, in the winter, I drink mostly warm, but in other times of the year, I'll just drink room temperature. I love um, with lemon or lime. Lime is really nice because <laughs> one time I, I the, one of the, I usually use lemon and then one time I was like, I'm gonna just try lime. And then all of a sudden I felt like I was drinking a margarita. Like it was, <laughs> it was very refreshing. <laughs> just change it up, you know, like our tongue, our, our, our digestive system starts at our lips and it, it goes, it starts at our tongue. It doesn't even just, you know, the belly is something totally different. And so that's the other fun thing about seasonal eating is you just want to, you want to entertain your tongue. Like you want to give it different things to eat and surprise it at times. Uh, we have a question about, will there be an email recording of this? Yes, there will be. Um, it will not be sent out tonight, um, but probably tomorrow or the next day. And then uh, also it'll be on the library's YouTube page so you can find it there. Um, as soon as we're done, Allison's getting ready to go to bed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, someone asked what golden milk is, which you kind of answered. And I believe there's a recipe on your website. Is that right for that? Um, there might be. Um, but golden milk is, you can Google it. There's lots of different ways to make it, but a lot of it is made with um, milk. It could be cow's milk because um, it comes, um, well, yeah, or plant-based milk and turmeric. And turmeric is an anti-inflammatory. So, and you, you heat that up and you could add other things to it. You can add some different spices, but it could be a little filling, which it could be nice for people who, you know, are a little hungry in the evening, but it's also very, it's just very calming and very soothing. Um, it's, sometimes it's called golden seal, golden milk. I'm trying to think if there's a recipe on my website. <laughs> um, but again, you can easily um, Google that. Somebody might've already done that and put that in the chat. <laughs> Great. Um, somebody also asked, do you know whether light boxes help keep moods up in the winter? I, um, I don't know from personal experience, but I do know other people who have used them and really have um, felt supported by that. They really have felt that, you know, just adding in that extra um, bit of light in their day has, has really helped their mood. Um, but I've never, um, I've never tried one myself. Um, so I think also movement is really good to help people's mood as well, because, um, you know, it's going to increase your, um, it's going to increase your cortisol and your, um, the adrenaline, which, you know, it helps to boost mood. 
Thank you. I think um, we've got some thank yous and uh, other nice comments in the chat, but I think that's it as far as questions, unless anybody has any last minute burning questions. <laughs> All right. Um, it looks like that is a wrap then. Thank you again so much, Nancy. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll um, send out the recording once I have it to folks. Um, and it'll also be on the library's website. Please do check out um, Nancy's website, which I will put in the chat one more time. So you can grab that if you didn't get it before. Um, she also has uh, spots on her website to um, sign up for like courses, webinars, email lists, those sort of things if you're interested in getting more information from her more, more regularly. And of course you can find that on the um, links she shared as well to social media. And um, I think that about covers it. Thank you, Nancy. And thank you everybody for joining us. You are welcome. Thank you so much, um, Allison, again, for inviting me. And thank you all so much for, for being here tonight. This was a wonderful group of people and <laughs> hope that you'll try something and, and reach out to me and definitely check my website because I have a couple of um, actually like a big, huge self-care yoga retreat happening um, in March with a few spaces left and some other events as well. So have a good night, everybody. Get a good night's sleep. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.